Hello, welcome back. I'm Jeff Byers, and this is any 150 and we are in module three, and we are creating a low poly and of a dagger and a battle axe, and we are working on the battle axe handle. And the last time I talked to you, I said I was going to separate the straps that we created, but I am going to save that uh, for high poly modeling. So I'm not going to do that now. All right, some of the things I ran into, though, I'm just going to kind of discuss with you guys right now, is that I couldn't get uh, these edges to look soft. Let me give you an example. So, um, basically, it looked like this. Uh, let me show you. So, if yours looks like that, and you need to soften the edges. So, let's take you through that. So, I'm going to go into Edge, and we're going to soften those edges. Now, we don't want to soften these edges edges across here those need to be uh, nice and sharp but these guys right here if you hold that shift and control key down and do these okay it should go all the way down if it doesn't keep working on it make sure you select all those and just double click on those as you hold the shift and control key together shift and control at lets you add to your selection shift and control and lets you add to your selection and it should go all the way down. If it doesn't, don't worry. And these are the ones that you need to select. So shift and control all the way down. And, and that'll take care of the softness. It'll look a lot softer and look a lot nicer. Okay. So that's all done. That's fantastic. Uh, we don't want to do any of this stuff right here. So I'm going to hold, I'm going to click on the paint brush. Uh, lower that just a little bit and hold the control key down and just kind of deselect those on top. All right, because we want these to be sharp. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to hold the space bar down. Whoops, just hold it down and go to mesh display and go to soften edge. I'm holding the space bar down and click soften edge. There we go. So, what happens if it doesn't soften? Okay, so. Uh, if you find that something's not working in Maya, I think some of you have already talked to about this, but this is a great tip and a great trick to fix almost everything that goes wrong, believe it or not, 90% of some of the stuff that goes wrong in your scene is because there's too much history on your objects, or your scene gets what we call mild, mildly corrupted. If it was totally corrupted, it wouldn't open up. So it's mildly corrupted. And that means that things like tools don't work. Um, if you click on your object and, for instance, you hit the W key and you don't see your manipulator, that's a corruption, a mild corruption. If you, um, like I said, if you don't see that, a manipulator that could be a problem or you put a texture on an object and you can't see it or your object comes in you know it's there but it's not showing those are all p types of corruption whether it's mild or not can cause all kinds of problems and issue it's a scene corruption it's not your objects that are corrupted it's your scene and so what happens is you keep saving and saving and saving and you never fix it and it gets worse and worse and worse so the best thing that you can do is to save your scene as it is even if it's corrupted and I'll show you how to fix it you know 90 percent right that other 10 percent could be something that's a lot worse and we'd have to do something else and I'll show you that in just a second so two surefire ways to get things working right if all goes to pot, right? All right. So, if you know a tool should be working and it's not, or um, a lot of times you guys, <laughs> you guys have emailed me and you, and you're like, um, I've got these vertices selected, but it's moving the whole thing. Like if I select this vertex, it moves everything. Um, that's because you have the B key down, and that is soft select tool. Okay. That's like if you go in here and double click on that and go to your soft selection tool and you click on it you know this is what happens okay but it doesn't look like that it just looks like a everything turns um, yellow okay so the soft select can be uh, turned on and off by the B B as in boy or Bob okay so I can turn that off and on with hitting the B key okay so anyway that happens sometimes um, some of you guys 
and, and that's hard to get out of. If you don't know what, what's happened, it can be real frustrating. Uh, I get that. So, okay, sure far away. Something goes wrong. Okay, this is what you do. Um, you want to go in and save your entire scene. So save scene as, right? And go ahead and whatever you need to do. Let's maybe type in 17. And save it. Okay. And the next thing you do, I know it sounds strange, but you're going to go into File, New. Okay, so this is a new scene. So anything that was going wrong in your old scene, let's test it out. Let's say the manipulator didn't show up before. So you click on a sphere, okay? And we hit the F key, and, if, and we focus on it, and then we hit the W key. Oh, it works. Okay, you know this scene is working because it's brand new, right? Okay. So if if it still doesn't work, if see if even if you create a new scene like go file new scene, it destroys everything. It's a brand new scene, nothing's in it. And you bring you click on a sphere and you're and you hit the W key and you still don't see a manipulator tool. There's a couple things you can do. Hit the plus or negative sign on your keyboard. Okay? That lets you your uh, manipulator gets bigger or smaller so hit the plus sign a couple times if you don't see your manipulator tool or it could be so big you just don't see it but go, so hit the plus sign and if it doesn't if you still don't see it then your your computer meaning the Maya software is completely corrupted so how do we get that fixed okay that's a little more in depth so uh, if you got a lot of problems and you need to reset Maya to straight out of the box the first time you open it up this is what you can do if you really mess things up and things are all over the place and you don't know how to restart it this is how you do that so you turn off Maya Maya has to be turned off so click off Maya this takes a while and I like doing this anyway I do this every week I do a fresh restart so I'm going to, however you want to open up your stuff, I'm just going to open up through my recycle bin, and I'm going to go to Documents, okay? So this is really important, Documents, and you go to uh, Maya, and you go to 2020. Look how many versions I've got in here. i got 15, 16, 17, 18. I skipped 19 for some reason, and I've got 2020. So cl click on 2020 and my press folder that's the magic key right there so you press so now I'm gonna delete this okay so I'm gonna right click over it and delete it make sure Maya is not running okay Maya cannot be running otherwise <laughs> you'll have problems you'll have to reinstall Maya you don't want to do that so delete okay and then you want to delete it out of the recycle bin so right click over the recycle bin and click empty recycle bin and you'll say yeah do you want to do this sure yeah absolutely all right, so we're good. So that's it. And then um, go back into Maya and reopen it up, which takes a while. I'm going to pause it while it opens up. Oh, yeah, it's going to ask you, do you want to create a default uh, preferences? Yes, click on that one. And it's going to open up like the very first time you ever had it, you know, the very first time you loaded it, which means you're going to get a fresh Maya. Okay, that comes up. That comes up. Okay, give it time to reload. Don't do anything. Don't click on anything. Just let it go through its cycle. It takes a while to load all of those plugins. So let it go, and it's going to give you what's new and highlighted settings. Remember the first time you open up Maya? Okay. Click off of that. It's I think it's still loading stuff. Now let me let me give you a warning. Okay, meaning that it's it's starting from scratch okay so all your preferences that you had before are gone they are totally wiped clean so only do that if you don't mind losing everything like let's say I have I created a new shelf and I have all my hotkeys and I've got them on my hotkeys hotkeys set up um, you're gonna lose that stuff if you do what I just did okay but you can see that I've got Arnold in here. It's not where I had it before because I had changed it. And you can see up here in this uh, area up here, you can see all that um, looks right. Okay, I've got Arnold. Now, if you don't have any, if you don't see Arnold, then you either didn't load it when you when you were installing, and you probably didn't know you needed to have that. 
Um, so you probably didn't click on the little checkbox. Whenever I load software, I check I check all the check marks. I check all the check boxes so I have everything. I just do that uh, because I don't want to miss anything later and have to reinstall it. If you did not reinstall, or if you didn't install Arnold, didn't do that check mark when you're um, installing, you have to reinstall uh, Maya to get Arnold. Now they do have. You can go on the Autodesk and and see if you can uh, download it. Uh, from Solid Angle, I think that's Arnold. Anyway, um, so you go on the Autodesk website and go um, update or download Arnold, and it'll you'll be able to uh, you know download it maybe, or you can just reinstall Maya. Anyway, I hope you don't have to, but if you have to to get Arnold, it's well worth it. Okay, and you'll need to have it for you know obviously to render your your food cans, right? All right, so. We got all that done, and I even I think I even did a tutorial or wrote a tutorial for you guys on Module 2 to get that done. Anyway, with that said, so whatever corruption you had before should be kicked in the butt. So that means we're going to go to, we already have a new scene, just go to Import, right? And let's go ahead and click on, I need to get my file set, so I'm going to go to File, Set Project. And I'm sorry I'm off base here, but I wanted to show you how to uh, get everything uh, uh, figured out and so fix things okay so here's my battle axe 17 and so when I open this up it is opening for the first time and there it is so it sh I shouldn't have any corruption whatsoever and everything should work perfectly just like the first time I open it up okay so that's how you kind of fix uh, some small problems and issues uh, with pretty much almost 90% of your issues and problems can be solved that way. All right, so with that said, uh, now we're going to go into rendering. Okay, so we've got all these softened edges, and let's look at everything that we have now. So we got the blade low poly, which is really cool. Everything looks looking good. And I think that's it. Um, handle blade, yeah, I think that's it. Spend a lot of time on this guy, but I think it looks pretty good. Okay, now we just gotta light it up and 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 make sure all the edges are looking good, nice and soft. Got some sharp edges here, so we should be able to see all that. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete by type history on everything. And I want to center pivot. Okay, and let's go ahead and move that up to right about there. And I'll take you through how to render these things out and make them look good. We're going to start with the battle axe first. It doesn't really matter which one you do it, because we're going to use the same um, we're going to use the same uh, lighting system. Okay. So we're going to create a floor. Always got to have a floor. Okay. Let's go ahead and scale that up. There we go. We want it to be pretty large because we want to be able to see that. Okay, so we can see that. And if you kind of want, um, oh, like a, a basic, um, what is the best way to describe it? It like a background. Um, you can move and rotate these things up. So I can show you how to do that really quick. So I can hit the three key, and that makes it very, very interesting. Let me let me click on that. Make sure it's object mode and hit the three key. And then you can go into vertex mode, and this is kind of fun. You're gonna like that. So I'm gonna rotate this and just kind of move that up a little bit and rotate again. Here we go, and move that up. And you can see that we want it just kind of like that. It's fine, and that way we can get pretty close to it. And so we have a background. It's kind of fun. There we go. And that will work just great. It'll be a nice background for us. And let's go in here. And we'll just keep it uh, like that. Because Arnold will see the resolution as soft, right? Because if I hit the one key, it looks like that. <laughs> it's a nice hard edge. But Arnold will see that as uh, more soft. It'll look like the three, like that. Okay, so with that done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add Arnold textures to these, the shaders. All right, so we're going to go with um, basically kind of like what we did 
with the soda can when we first did that. Um, and that's pretty easy to do. So I'm going to right click over this and go to assign new material. Okay. And Arnold shader and then AI standard surface. And let's go ahead and go to AI standard surface one. You have to click on that arrow at the top. And I'm going to just name this um, Axe Blade. Okay. All right. Axe Blade. And texture. All right. Axe Blade texture. And I'm going to click on the handle. Okay. And I'm going to right click over that and I'm going to call that new material shader and we're going to call that um, I think that would be axe handle texture there we go perfect All right so and then the background um, let's go ahead and uh, select that right click over that and go to assign new material and this will be a standard surface again and this will be just floor a texture there we go perfect All right so um, we'll start with the floor texture again we don't want to outshine our axe so let's keep it pretty low key try not to do any wild colors like that color at what you need so you want to keep it kind of pastel um, let's say we don't want it we want it we do not want it the same color for sure as the objects take a look at this let's see if we can do like a a tan would be good for that let's do a tan let's really soften that up maybe a little bit lighter here we go okay that might work pretty good so tan and then that will look maybe let's uh, darken that a little bit more so that really pops out okay because we really want it to pop out it's really important otherwise we could probably turn it black All right so we want it to really pop out I'm, I really want you to show off your model that's the whole idea see how much work you put into it and be proud of it you took a lot of time to do the axe and, uh, for sure so we really want to show that off okay so with that said um, some different uh, rendering resolutions okay so um, with this I want to show a little bit of reflection on it so that's important I'm gonna click on the axe blade again I'm gonna show you the settings I'm gonna have for this so we're gonna go um, a little bit darker with the color so with this um, I think like want like want black then go up one two two uh, levels and do that with this uh, handle too so we're going to go all the way up with weight and then we're going to click on that color and we'll go have those two pretty dark okay and uh, we're going to go into that one and that should pop up all automatically for us we're going to turn up we've got um, the roughness at two IR let's just leave it at at those settings right now they might be too much but we can just check it out and let's go ahead and do if we do a quick render let's go in here and go into um, Arnold right here we need to have at least the sky dome and you probably you probably remember that part sky dome is important okay now we're not really seeing the sky dome we don't have any real textures on here so we don't have to worry about having a an HDRI image like we did with the food can right we're just showing off our model so that's important make sure you're facing the Z axes that's really important too as well and we're gonna start off with Arnold here um, and to see what we got so I'm gonna go to Arnold and then render and don't worry if you can't see anything that's okay um, I think the color of the the model is fine. The dark gray works really well. Okay, and um, we need to probably go darker with the background because it's kind of fighting that color. Um, so let's go ahead and let's change that background. 
floor texture and let's make it a lot darker. So I'm going to click on the color. I'm going to bring that down a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so we, so it kind of sticks out a little bit. And notice that that Arnold is showing that as a beautiful um, you know, curve. Look at that. It's pretty amazing. I'm going to rotate around in there so you can see. Look at that. So when we're showing our work off, um, there's a couple things we can do. Let me move over this way a little bit. We want we want to have a perspective, okay, something like that, and that automatically shows the side. So I'm gonna click on the floor, and move it over, so we don't see it anymore, right? I'll move that over here, move that over like that. It takes a little bit. There we go. So now you can you can't see it. So you want to kind of get put your model in the best light possible, okay? And we don't see much detail here because I see a little bit of the wrapping, but it's really not noticeable because it's such a big object, right? It's pretty big. So what I need to do is when we render this out, I got to get the lighting just right though. So I'm going to go back in here. And what if I did make that black? It's It still won't be like solid black because uh, I've got so much reflection on it right okay so if I were to turn off the roughness and if I turn down the IOR okay you can see what it, it turns out because the the color here let's go ahead and bring that back where it was and let's turn the roughness up because that'll flatten it out and then all of a sudden wow you can see we can it'll start it's almost be pitch black okay I don't like that in particular. I like to so show a little bit of reflection. So I'm just, just going to kind of play with this a little bit. Okay, get it just kind of way I want it. I want to be able to see that's really nice and satiny. That looks pretty cool. And that'll work out really nice. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is add a light. So I'm going to turn this off. Okay, I'll move this over to the side. And I'm going to add a three point light system to this whole scenario. So we'll do this really quick. So create. And we're going to go into lights. I'm going to create a directional light. We're going to bring this up and out. And this is going to be um, the key light. Okay. So I'm going to rotate it and rotate it this way, like that. Okay. That's the key light. All right. And then I'm going to duplicate that, Control D, and uh, move this over and rotate it the other way like that and that'll be the fill light okay so I've got that going on and I'm gonna take this guy right here control D and hit the W key and move that back and I'm going to rotate that like that and like that and that's gonna be our backlight or rim light I'm gonna give it a lot more of an angle here alright so the rule of thumb let me get rid of this for a second I'll put this in the render queue just to get rid of it. So if this is the key light that's going to cause create the shadows, let's move that over a little bit more like that. And and that's angled like that. And this is going to fill in those dark areas right here. What we can do, because we want to see shadows, because we're really not seeing this really beautiful work that we've done. So that's what the shadows are for. Okay. So I'm going to click on the first one, and we're going to go to the first one. We're going to take this down to something like point, um, oh, let's say, point 0.8. And this one here, let's go into Arnold with the same one here. And uh, exposure, and that's going to be the same amount, point 0.8. And angle and samples, and we're not going to have, that one's going to cast shadows, so this one's going to need at least two samples for shadows. And the angle will be set at 2. Yeah, it's set at 2 for diffusion. So the higher that goes, the, the more the, the shadow spreads out. Um, it does look more realistic when it spreads out a little bit more. We can experiment with that. Okay, let's take a look at what we have so far. So um, that light's set up, and then we're going to set this one up. And we got to set the intensity at, at a lower uh, amount. So. Basically, the rule of thumb is if this is 0.8, this is going to be half as bright. So that's going to be a 0.4. So let's do 0.4 on that. Okay, whoops. 
So let's see here what I do here. Point four. Okay. Exposure point four. There we go. At the bottom here. And uh, we don't want cast shadow, so we don't have to worry about samples. And then the backlight. Okay. The backlight is going to be half of that intensity, so that's going to be uh, point two on that one and point two on exposure and again we don't have we don't want shadows coming from that so we turn that off so shadows are turned off here and they're turned off here another thing we got to think about is that lights are not um, white okay so we want to we're going to click on the first key light and click on that use color temperature and let's go to something like 5800 okay gives us a warm tone let's do the same thing with this guy right here so use color temperature and 5800 we want to make sure all of those are set up to be 5800 okay there we go all right i think we're ready to render and we should see a shadow this time we can also turn the the dome light down the intensity so let's do 0.5 we don't need as as much of a uh, intensity on that and the exposure as at 0.5 as well. Okay, samples we want to turn up to two. Now we're on the sky dome light. You just you know click on that. We're gonna zoom in on here. Get a nice look here on that and go ahead and let's do the Arnold render again. I think I closed it. Uh, let's do that real quick and see how how close that looks and how good that looks. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and let's do a full render. And this time I'm going to do um, go into the render settings. And the system render should be set at something like 5 and 3 and 3. And in comments tab, we're going to do a higher resolution. This time we're not going to do, like, we're not going to waste time on HD we're going to we're going to do because this uh, object is is really long um, we're going to click on 2k square okay so it'll be 2040 by 2048 so I'm going to close that and then I'm going to go into my um, my mask okay and you can kind of see how close I can get it like that and I've got my mask on Okay, there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and do my, um, let's do a quick render. I don't know how quick that's going to be, but we'll get to see that. I'm going to pause it. Okay, the render's done, and it's crazy long. It's 6 minutes and 56 seconds, and that's with a 1080 Ti um, and a lot of memory. So 2048 by 2048. So it looks good. Uh, if I go to one to one ratio, you can see that I can see all the details. That's one to one. So everything looks really nice. Okay, you can see all the details we have in here. We have some reflection off of here, which is kind of nice. We can see the straps really well. Those look really nice, look really good. Very happy with that. So the, the render's good. I, I didn't fix, I need to fix some of these straps so they look a little nicer but that looks pretty good I like that I'm gonna extend the top a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just say this is a good test I mean it's I need to fix the top but I like what I'm seeing in the background it looks really nice it looks really good so happy with that go to file go into save image option box make sure the color manage excuse me color manage image is on if you do raw image, your image that you give me will be really dark and I'll probably uh, count off in points because you did not uh, click on color manage image. If you don't trust yourself and you, what I would suggest you do is bring it into a program like Photoshop and make sure the levels are up higher so I can it looks like what I have here. Okay, I'm going to apply and close. Okay, I haven't saved this yet. A lot of you also are giving me images that are not the right file format. I don't know how many did that. I'm uh, just not paying attention or what's going on. But don't go in here and I'm looking for JPEG. 
So, you know, scroll down till you get the right one, JPEG. I'm just going to do um, Axe Test, just because I tested that. The lighting's good. We just need to tweak it out a little bit more. I want it to be a little brighter. So I'm going to zoom out. I can You can see how close I came. And I'm going to see if I can move this in a little bit more so I can see the actual... There it is, right there. That's what I need, right there. So that's the actual size. So if I move this over, this is what I need to do, um, and so I can see what I'm, what's, what it's actually gonna, um, actually gonna show. And I'm gonna take this right here and right-click over it and go to vertex. And let's move, rotate these around like that, and then move them up like that. There we go. So now we're going to get something nice and smooth here. And it won't show. All right, so anyway, I'm going to go in here, and there it is. So it's all the way to the top. So that should, should look a lot better. And I'm going to zoom in here and get this full framed. And the only reason why I had to do that is if I go like that, it won't work. I have to click on this guy right here and just move it over, right? Here we go. Cool. And uh, the lights, go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Let me get the lights in here. And so I am going to go a little brighter with this. I'm going to go one on there and turn the exp exposure to one on that. I'm going to do 0.5 on this one instead of 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Okay. And 0.5. Okay. And so this has the. Resolution set up. I think we're at. I think that looks pretty good. I think the, the temperature, I mean, is 5800. That looks good. And the cast shadows is on. This one here is good. And then this one here. Let's turn that up to 0.3 on both intensity and exposure. Okay. All right. And if I zoom out and select this guy right here, I really don't want the intensity higher than uh, 0.25. Okay, I found that to be a kind of a nice spot because it. I don't want it to. I want to see shadows, and at the higher the higher you go on here, it takes your shadows away. Okay, we do want it to cast shadows. That's okay. I'm going to zoom in here, and we're going to get this set up to where it's a good. Basically, a really good perspective here. That looks good. Maybe we can make the blade a little shinier. Uh, let's take a look. That would be bring the roughness down to somewhere like 1.5, and that should make it pretty shiny. Okay, so I don't want to wait this long for a render. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this render down to 3 and too, because I'm doing a test render I do not want to go all the way up and with this instead of doing two two uh, K square we're going to do one K square so I don't have to wait so long another thing that I I uh, read that will help is do I want to do I render want to render CPU or GPU let me try GPU I've got a, a heck of a video card well I mean it's two two three years old it's 1080 Ti it's still pretty nice I'm going to do GPU just for fun. And um, minimum memory. Um, let's do. Let's type in because I've got um, 11. So I'm going to do 8. There you go. In megabytes. So 8 gigs. I think that's right. And we're good there. So, okay, and then we're going to go ahead and, and render. See how much faster that will be. Whoop. So something about GPU rendering. Uh-uh. That's not good. What's happening here? Enable to load optics library. NVIDIA driver 4320 is either too old or missing the optics. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. So I'll have to figure that out. I guess I'll have to do um, regular rending, rendering on that. Okay, let's go ahead and go back into the render settings and get that fixed. Otherwise, it won't work. So CPU, I guess I'm stuck with that. Darn it. All right, so let's go in here and 
render that. I'm going to go ahead and pause so you don't have to wait. Okay, that looks pretty good. And this rendered really fast um, at uh, 27 seconds. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with that. That worked out pretty good. Um, so 27 seconds uh, versus uh, 2 minutes. Now, again, this is a low um, values, right? But it still looks pretty good. We've got our shadows here. And I'm going to do one more quick render. Let me zoom out just a little bit and grab this guy. And I'm going to rotate him a little bit more so we can get more shadows. And see so if we can get that to look a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that in, just render it one more time. This is going to give us a little harsher shadows here, hopefully. And uh, show a little more detail off. Again, I'm, I'm not even going to pause it because it's rendering so fast. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm far away from it. Okay, I need to get closer. That's a terrible composition. Okay, if you want to stop a render, just hit the escape key. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in. I forgot to get that back in there. Get it composed right. Good composition is key. And anything else I can do? I think the lights look okay. Okay, all right. So let's just pop that in here. And we'll do our full render now. And so the full render, it's really up to you how crazy you want to go here. But 3222 will give you an okay image, and that's okay for modeling, right? We'll keep it that way. And then the comments tab, we're going to go to 2K. I do want you to do 2K square, like 2048 by 2048. And then you go ahead and render. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to pause it so you don't have to wait. Okay, we're back, and we've got this awesome render. And so it turned out really nice, and you can see that if I go to one-to-one, -to -one, I can now go in here and look at all the cool detail and see all the cording and that looks really really good very happy with that I can even see the blade edge right here okay that's great so this is a good render for um, the axe so I'm gonna go ahead and go file this will be in my final render uh, save image as make sure I've got color managed image on apply and close and then go back in here and make sure that I click on JPEG JPEG no none of this other weird stuff uh, I got some strange weird stuff that you just gotta make sure you click it's like anything else you have a choice right don't wanna kick keep it on alias pics I can't read that so and then you gotta name it with your first name right last name right and then what module is this uh, module uh, 3 right so we'll class you in 2 it's probably a good idea uh, 150 okay module 3 and then you can name it whatever you want so this is going to be your um, I don't know perspective render PRS okay good perspective and we'll just do uh, 0 1 I'm going to highlight this and uh, do a control C so I don't have to keep, you know, renaming stuff. And then save it. And that's going to be my render. And then I'm going to close that. And I need a, a render from the back too as well. So I'm going to go ahead and spin this around. Something like that. And let's show that uh, side of it. And we'll go ahead and do that. We'll pause the. Okay, we're back and the render's done. And here's the back. So we're going to go ahead and save that. Save image. And we're going to go in here. And we're just going to name that number two. So we got the front and back. Fantastic. Great. So close that. 
So what I need to do next is to just what we have here. We're going to click on this and this. And we're going to go ahead. And before I do that, I do want to do one thing. Let's click off of this a minute. And go to File, Save Scene, and just call this like Render. So let's do 18 underscore render. All right, so lighting's done. Do the render there. There we go. So I got that. So I'm going to click on this guy right here and this guy right here and do the old wireframe, right? So I'm going to do assign new material. You know the, the deal. You did this with the cans. And we're going to go with the wireframe. Okay, great. So that should do the wireframe, right? And I think that, yeah, there it is, wireframe. And make sure you you want to do polygons for edge types. Let's do the bottom. And we're going to do uh, polygons for that too as well. So that looks good. All right, everything looks good. And we'll do another render. And this should be super fast. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is the back, so, since we're in the back anyway. And so we're going to do wire. And this kind of tells me how you built it, what it turned, and look at. I'll be able to look at mine and then look at yours and see if you built it uh, close to the same way. It doesn't have to match exactly, but it's got to be pretty close. So I know you were following my tutorials. All right, so we get a decent looking wireframe that looks really good, and we're doing it at uh, 2048 by 2048. I'm gonna pause it uh, so yeah, I'm not wasting your time. Okay, and there's that, and then we're going to go into File, Save Image, and click on one of these guys, and we'll just put in Wireframe on this. Okay, we're almost finished. Let's see, this will be... We'll keep that as two. Okay, so that one's done, and then uh, close that, and then we're going to rotate back again. Oh, what? Don't want to do that. Um, let's get back that back where we were, and then we'll just rotate this guy back again. Like that. Get that back into place. Like that. All right, and then we'll go ahead and render that. And I'll pause again. Okay, we're back again, and we are finished. Let's go to file. Save image and let's do wireframe one on that one. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some screenshots. So the renderings, the render is done for the axe. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here and do a control A and put the axe in a layer. Okay, turn that off and I'm going to open up my uh, blade. So, I need to make sure I save my scene, okay? So, I think I did already. So, I'm going to do this at 19, okay? All right, great. And then I'm going to open up my uh, dagger. So, I'm going to go File. And I'm going to do go into um, Open. And just go ahead and get my dagger, which is the very bottom last one I saved here. Okay, so all the pieces are separate, so I'm going to select all the pieces. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go Export Selection. Okay, this is going to be my very, uh, my MB file, Export Selection, and this is going to be my Dagger, so I'm just going to call it Dagger Export, right? That should be easy, Dagger Export. Okay, good. All right, so let's go back into File Open, and now I'm going to open up my uh, the last render I did. Okay. All right, so there it is, and now I'm going to go into File, and I'm going to import. So I'm going to import that dagger, which is right here, and import that into my scene, just like that. And I'm going to select all the components, and I'm going to move it up. Whoops. I'll move it up and zoom out a little bit. Let's go to the. Looks like I've got two daggers on top of each other. 
Oh, awesome. So I'm just going to, uh, I guess, delete. There we go. And select this one here again. Okay. And move that down. All right, something like that will work. And the same lighting system, which is cool. Okay, so we got the same lighting system. Everything looks good. And let's close this off a little bit. Can I do that? Uh, let's go Control A. There we go. So we can see we can get that set up like that. And we're even going to put the same textures on. All right, so if I can find them, so I'm going to click on that. Uh, assign existing material. Uh, so let's go axe blade texture. Okay, and we're going to click on all of these. Axe blade texture. And continue all the way uh, down. Okay, do the same one as we did before. Assign existing material, axe blade texture, and then do our quick render. And just kind of set my camera up a little bit. Kind of an angle here, perspective. Get it framed properly. And render that out. And we're going to go ahead and uh, pause. Okay, that was probably the easiest render I've done because I just imported my blade into the same exact lighting scenario that I had for uh, the axe. So everything looks great. So I couldn't be happier. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start saving my images. And I'll just name this something different. This will be uh, my dagger. And this will not be wireframe. This will be just perspective. Okay. And I don't, I'm not going to bore you with um, everything that I'm doing here, meaning that you already know I need a front and a back of this and a front and a back of the wireframe for, for this, uh, for this uh, module 3. So I already showed you how to do that. And you can rotate the blade to see the back. It should be the same as the front, but I need to see that. And add a wireframe front and back. And so that needs to be done. And those are the ones you're going to turn in. Again, I think you guys know how to do your own screenshots. I hope you know how to do your own screenshots by now because you did that with your um, your food cans. So those are things you're going to do on your own. Okay. So uh, and the turn in instructions will be pretty uh, pretty quick. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot there. Just what you're going to be turning in. And it'll be uh, four uh, rendered images of the battle axe, four um, of the screenshots, and so shall you should have eight per object. So 16 all together. Okay. And uh, the turn in instructions will be the end all. It doesn't matter what I'm saying right now. If I ask you for only five or ten, just do what I'm asking you for the turn in. Right now, in my head, I'm, I'm thinking that that's what I'm going to need. And then, you know, when it comes to turn in time, uh, that's why you watch those. And um, I'm just showing you how to render to get those renders done, and that's really important. Okay, so you're just going to take this guy right here, and again, I'm not going to render. I'm done rendering. You guys can do this yourself, and then rotate it, just like that. Okay, that's going to be the back. And then do the wireframe, you know, with the renders. And you know how to do that. You can always uh, rewind the video and uh, watch what I did with the battle axe. All right, that's it. Good luck, and I wish you the best. And uh, you guys uh, have a great week, and please watch the turn-in instructions on exactly the renders that I need to have. And I'll have a couple of uh, examples, uh, just two, um, of front, you know, perspective, and uh, then you, and you know, that you're going to be turning in way more than just two. 
but those are just the examples I'm going to have for you guys so you can look at them and check them out. Again, uh, we want to be 2048 by 2048. And again, good luck and have a great week. I'll see you guys later. I'll see you in Module 4.